we're doing an application of Reverse Eye, um, building it, Othello, the game Othello, as a web application. This is the last video in a chunk of videos where we're trying to just get the functionality of the board and the lobby working. And then in the next chunk, we'll start working on business logic. So in this particular video, we want to handle the game over message. When the server tells us that the game is over, we want the client to sort of indicate that. So we're going to start. Um, in order to work on that, we're going to go to server.js and we're going to implement some code that is going to detect that the board, uh, that the game is done. Uh, this isn't going to be complete because in the actual game of Othello, the game can end when no one else can play. But we're just going to check for the purposes of demonstrating the game over effect. We're just going to check to see when the game board is full since we don't have any rules preventing people from playing. So let's swing over to Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio Code and check in on server.js. So at the bottom of server.js, we have a function which is sending the game update. And at the bottom of that, we had a little placeholder that said check if the game is over. And that's where we're going to add some of our code here. <clears throat> The way we'll do that is we'll keep track of a count of how many spaces are filled, and we'll start that off with zero. And then we'll do two loops where we look through every element in the board to see whether or not the board is full. So we'll say for let row equals zero, semicolon, while row is less than eight, do row plus plus paren curly brackets. And then we'll duplicate that and we'll replace row with the word column. And when what we're going to check for is we're going to check to see whether or not game sub game underscore ID dot board and look at the row and the column. And if it is not equal to a space, that means there's some kind of a token there. And we want to increment count by one. Well, that'll look through every element of our board. And then when we're done looking through every element of the board, we'll put an if statement here that tells us what we're gonna do. So if count equals 64, triple equals 64, that means that our board is filled because there's 64 spaces on the board. Then we're gonna create a little payload um, and we're gonna send that back to the client. And our payload will just say that our result, result is single quote success, comma, and our game ID is colon game underscore ID, comma. And we'll send the game as well, which is the board game, the <clears throat> state of the board. And so that's going to be games, square bracket, game ID, square bracket, comma. And then the last thing we'll send is just the text who won. And we'll just send everyone. Because right now we're not checking to see who won. We'll add that with game logic later. We'll send that back to everyone that's in the room that uh, is associated with the game, game underscore ID. And what we're going to do is we're going to send the signal game over and we'll send that along with the payload we just built all right let's take a look at that so look all right i think that looks okay now this next little bit i'm going to do is kind of is optional uh, it would be sort of more important if this was a huge game but for those of you who are interested in the closures what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little bit of t uh, code here that's going to delete old games after one hour so when, after we send the game over command, there's nothing else for the players to do. And so they're likely going to return back to the lobby. But we still have a record of the game in our memory. And so our memory, we don't want our memory to fill up. That would only happen if we had thousands and thousands of games being played simultaneously. <clears throat> but to demonstrate how you could delete games, we'll put a little timer here that will delete games after an hour by using closures. And the basic way that we're going to do that is we're going to set a timeout, which means we're going to set a, a work that's going to be done in the future uh, on our behalf and we'll put an alarm in and we'll say 60 times 60 times 1000 which is one hour 60 times 60 times 1000 milliseconds and what we're going to have it what we're going to ask the computer to do is to run a function and we're going to need to do this with a closure so we'll um, create a function that takes an id and um, then we're going to end up running that um, that closure with the game ID. We're going to pass in game ID. And then what we're going to end up doing in the closure itself is we're going to end up returning a function that uses that game ID. And all it's going to do is delete games and then ID that was passed in. 
Let's just make sure we've got everything closed up. That's the function that we're returning. That's the end of the return statement. So my colon there for fun. That's the end of the function that we're running the closure on. This is the execution of the closure. This is what we're passing as the parameter. And then this is for set timeout. And that should be good. All right, so that's a closure. All right, yeah, let's see, we can do that just for, it's all the same, just looks a little cleaner. That's a closure that will delete games after an hour. All right, good. So we now have our server sending our client a game over command, but our client is not expecting a game over command. So we need to implement that on the, um, on the client side. Client side is main.js. That's where we receive these signals. So we'll open up main.js and we'll, um, we can opt, opt to copy this play token response. We'll copy it and put it down below, put a copy down below. And we'll just make this the game over handler. What our game over handler has to do is first check, make sure the payload is okay. We'll do that using that boilerplate here. And um, we will then, um, on game over, we will uh, announce with a button to the lobby. So we're going to do kind of a similar pattern as we did before. We're going to build some HTML and then insert it in a way that sort of fades in nicely. So we'll create one node, and the first node, and that's going to be using um, jQuery. And we're going to um, compose a div whose ID is game over. Now we ha already have one in our um, in our document object model, but we're going to replace it with this one. So we want to put a game over back in there. Use double quotes around the outside and single quotes on the inside. Then what we're going to end up putting inside there is some more HTML. The first thing that we're going to put in there is just the, you know, the text of game over. And the next thing that we will put in there is who won. And let's see, so we need to um, compose a little HTML here for who won. We'll use H2, uh, double quotes, single, and then we'll say payload.who won. That's the server telling us who won. And we'll append that to some text, um, space one, and then the close H2. That'll get inserted in our document object model. Looks good. And then node D will be a button that we're going to make. And so we'll make our button and it is going to be a hypertext link that references back to lobby.html. And we're going to pass it the username equals. Um, this is this is the tricky, tricky one here. So we're going to do username equals double quotes plus username plus double quotes single quotes to end the href within the text. Then we need to give it some classes. Classes equal single quotes. We'll give it button, make it a large button, button large, and we'll give it button success as the semantics. And let's see, I'm not sure if it's button large or button LG. Uh, let me pause and look that up. It is button LG, so let's make that a large button. Uh, button success, and we need to close out with a single quote, and then we'll say the role equals single quote button, single quote, um, and then we will provide a angle bracket. We'll put the text on the button as return to lobby. We will close out that hypertext A tag, we'll close it all off with the double quotes back in our JavaScript, and if all goes well, it should be color coded correctly. So the string is your string color and the variables are a different color. We now have node A, B, C, and D, and we need to build it out. So we'll say node A dot append node B. So we'll add that into the div and then we'll append node C and then we'll append node D and then we are going to hide node A, hide node A. And then we are going to find the spot on our board where we have our game over ID. And we are going to replace that with node A. And then we're going to do node A.show. And we'll do uh, fade. And we'll make it take 1, 1,000 to 1,000. We'll make it take 1,000 seconds. One second, 1,000 milliseconds. All right. 
Look at that for a second, make sure it looks okay. Looks okay to me. So now our client receives a game over message and can display that game over message. Um, let's take a look and see how that does. And then we've got a few housekeeping items to clean up after that. So let's go to server.js. Let's try and run it and see if we have any syntax errors. We did, we had one on 670. So let me take a look at 670. What did I do wrong? If games, game ID dot board column, oh, I had a misplaced square bracket. There we go. Let's try that again. All right, server's running, that looks pretty good. Let's go over here to our client and let's go ahead and do A and B. We'll invite A and we'll play. Game over. So here we go. If I click here, mm, something went wrong. Let's see what happened. Everything looked okay there. If I look in the text of my inspect tab, it says replace is not a function on line 403 of main.js. It should be replace, I think it should be replace node. Replace with, that's what it is. All right, unfortunately, in order to test that out, we need to go back, try that again. All right, the last one, we click here and great. We got game over, let's make sure the return to lobby button works. That one works there and then over here. Great, and then we're back in the lobby. <clears throat> So that's our game over signal. Let's do a couple other just little housekeeping bits. One thing I want to do is I want to make this, uh, when we join our game here in the upper right, where it says quit button, I want to replace that with an actual quit button. <clears throat> so let's, <clears throat> excuse me, let's take our node D code here. That's like a quit button. And let's come down to the bottom of main.js. And after we assign lobby title, which isn't present in our game.html, just like that, what we will do is we will find the quit ID and we will replace that with some HTML here. It should be the same thing, lobby.html. We'll send the username, the class button, button large. Uh, it'll just be a normal size button and we'll make it button danger so that we don't accidentally hit it. And then we will just, we'll say quit instead of return to lobby and everything else should be the same. Save that. And then if we come back one and we play, there we go. Our quit button gets thrown up there. That's great. Uh, and the last thing I'd like to do is I'd like to update this white sum versus black sum so that white sum and black sum have numbers in them. So to do that, that's gonna happen on main.js. It's gonna, we're gonna do it back up here uh, when we're doing our, our board update. <clears throat> so we're coming to our game update. And after we have updated our game and we have gone through and we've replaced all of our tokens, we wanna go through our board, our new board, and we wanna establish what the, um, well, let's see, what, what do we wanna do here? Well, we know we want to count to see how many um, things are are black and how many are white. We already have a loop going through here. So let's go ahead and add a variable outside our loop, which is called white sum, and that'll be equal to zero. And then let's add black sum, and that'll be equal to zero initially. And then as we go through this loop, we'll say, uh, I'll grab this line here and put it here. And we'll say, if board row column triple equals white, uh, then white sum will be increased and else if it equals B then black sum will be increased and then at, this goes through the loop so it'll count everything and then when we're done going through the whole loop let's update our HTML right before old board equals board so that we'll put in the location whose identity is white sum We'll just drop in there, kind of unstyled, but we'll just put the number in. And then we'll do the same with black sum. Save that. 
And now if we go back, and we go back, we enter our game, you can see that the count is shown here once we start going. And then as you click through, the count gets updated with how many of the different tokens are on the page. So that's kind of nice. I mean, the styling's not great, but it's getting the right answer. All right, that's good. So let's see, we've added our quit button, we've handled the game over command, we've counted the um, sums. I think that's everything that we need to do just for the functionality of our board. Basically what we have here is we have an open play board. There's everything we need uh, to identify the game. We just need to add the game rules on top of that. So that's that'll be our last sprint here. But I think for now we have pretty good game functionality and I'm pretty happy with the way it is. I hope you're able to duplicate this without too much trouble. Thank you very much for your attention.